In this video, we'll go through how to upload a network discovery file to Link Live and view the discovery information. The topics covered will be Upload a discovery file from an Etherscope NXG. View a network topology map. View the discovery analysis information. Identify the differences between two discovery files. And view the Wi-Fi analysis information included with a discovery file. The first step in viewing a discovery file in Link Live is to upload the discovery information from the Etherscope NXG. Upon connecting the Etherscope NXG to my network, it began the discovery process. We can see the discovery progress here at the top of the screen. Once it hits 100%, I'm ready to upload the discovered devices to Link Live. To upload the discovery information, I'll tap on the three dots in the upper right corner of the screen. I'll then tap on Upload to Link Live. From this screen, I can provide a descriptive name for the discovery file, comments to be attached, and even a job comment. Tapping on Save to Analysis Files will upload the discovery information to the Link Live organization to which the Etherscope is claimed. Let's jump over to Link Live to view the discovery information. I'll click on the Analysis section on the left side of the screen. Here I can see all the discovery files that have been uploaded from the Etherscope NXG. I'll select the one we just uploaded. Notice the link between the discovery file and the Wi-Fi analysis file directly below it. Each time I upload a discovery file to Link Live, the Etherscope NXG also uploads the Wi-Fi analysis information. The uploaded information allows me to generate a topology map of the network, as well as drill into both the wired and wireless devices on the network. To the right of the list of discovery files, we find the file information. This provides me with detailed information about the discovery file. Here I can see the number of hosts, when the discovery was started, and the information about the Etherscope NXG that performed the discovery. In the upper right of the screen, we see the various options for viewing and analyzing the discovery information. These are Discovery Difference, Topology, Analysis, and Export. I'll start by clicking on Topology. After Link Live gets done processing the discovery information, I can see a connectivity diagram of my network and what's commonly called a topology map. I can zoom in and out of the diagram by using the scroll wheel on my mouse. I can drag the diagram by clicking on an empty spot and dragging the mouse. If I would like more information about one of these devices, I can double click on the device. This will display detailed information about the device. For example, if I double click on a switch, I can see the name, address information, VLANs, and detailed interface information. I'll click to close this window. By default, Link Live will lay the network out for me. If I try and move one of the devices, it'll bounce back to where it was located. Let's look at the settings and see how we can change the information that is displayed on the network diagram. Clicking on the settings icon, I can see the available settings. Let's start with labels. Here I can change the labels that are displayed with each device. For example, I can set wireless connections to SSID and wired connections to port. This will allow me to see the SSID each wireless device is using and the port to which each wired device is connected. Oftentimes, when running a discovery, you may pick up Wi-Fi devices that are not part of your network. These will show up as standalone devices on the topology map. If I enable Hide Unconnected Devices, this will hide any device that is not connected to my infrastructure. This is a great way to clean up the topology map. Now let's take a look at the display options. By default, the topology map is automatically laid out for you. The edge length and network spread sliders 
provide a means to adjust how far the devices are placed from where they are connected and the overall size of the topology map. If I choose to adjust the topology map manually, I will need to enable manual placement. This allows me to drag devices to desired locations. If manual placement is enabled, edge length and network spread will be disabled. Looking at the network topology map, we can see some of the devices are color-coded. The legend here tells us what each of those colors indicates. I'll click on a device that is orange. We can see there is one problem. This is a warning that the device has been rebooted in the last five days. Filtering allows me to drill down to just those devices of interest. I can filter using a free string match by typing any text into the filter field at the top of the screen. For instance, if I type in Netgear, only those devices with Netgear in the name will be displayed. This includes SSIDs, device names, MAC addresses, and any other text contained in the device record. The other method for filtering is to click on the filter icon next to the filter field. This displays a list of all the filter categories. Expanding a category displays the values on which I can filter. For example, I'll filter on my subnets and switches. Now I can see the switches on my network. Individual filter conditions may be removed by clicking on the X next to the condition or all of the conditions may be cleared by clicking on Clear. There are times when I would like to save a set of filter conditions, so I can use them over and over again. This is where templates come in. Clicking on the Tools icon in the lower right corner of the screen, I see a list of available tools related to the network topology map. I'll begin by clicking on Add to Template. Here we can see a list of my data labels, and filters that will be saved as part of the template. I'll call my template Switches. I'll go in and reset everything back to default settings. If I click on the Tools icon and select View Templates, all the templates I've saved are displayed. I'll click on View for the My Switches template. The topology map is updated to display the switches on my subnets. This is a very quick and easy way to apply a specific view to a topology map. There are times where I may want to export the topology map in a format that could be viewed outside of Link Live. There are two formats available, Microsoft Visio and SVG. Clicking on Tools, I can either export to Visio or download SVG. Here's an example of the network topology map opened using a browser-based version of Visio. In this example, I've opened the SVG file using my web browser. In either case, this is a great way to export the network topology map when creating documentation. Now that we've gone through how to view the network topology map, let's look at the Analysis option. Clicking on Analysis, we see a list of all the devices identified as part of the discovery. Detailed information can be displayed for each device by clicking on the device. As an example, I'll select one of my switches. In addition to the general name, address, and connectivity information, I see multiple sections. Expanding these sections will display the associated tables. For example, I can expand the Interfaces table. Here I can see a list of all the interfaces on the switch. For each interface, I can see information such as description, status, speed, duplex, MTU, connected device, and even VLAN. Next, I'll select a Wi-Fi device. Here I can see the channel and 802.11 type, as well as the AP to which the device is associated. This is powerful information when determining whether a device is using the expected band and authentication. The sort order for the discovered devices may be changed by clicking on the sort field above the list of devices. The selected sort field will be displayed under the device name. I can change the sort order from ascending to descending by clicking on the icon next to the sort field. This makes it easy to find a device, even in long lists. 
As with the network topology map, I can filter down on specific devices. This filter works the same as with the network topology map. As an example, if I want to see the devices using a specific SSID, I can either type the SSID into the filter field or use the filter icon to select the SSID from a list. At some point, you're going to want to be able to generate a report based on this discovery information. There are two report formats, a comma-separated values file, known as a CSV file, or a PDF report. Let's start by generating a CSV file. I create a CSV file by clicking on the Tools button in the lower right corner of the screen. Here, I can enter a descriptive title for the file. Clicking on Generate will begin the report generation process. When the process is complete, the file may be downloaded from the Uploaded Files section of Link Live. It is important to note that only those devices meeting the filter criteria will be included in the CSV report. For example, if I only want my routers and switches, I can click on the filter icon, then select Routers and Switches under Device Types. Then I'll click on Tools and Generate CSV. As with the Network Topology Map, I can save the sort order and filters as a template. In this example, I'll click on Tools and Add to Template. Then I'll give this template a name of Routers and Switches. To apply this template to the current view, I can click on Tools, View Templates, and then I'll click on View. Now that I've created at least one template, I can generate a PDF report. I'll click on Tools, then Generate PDF. From here, I select whether I want to add a logo, provide a title, add labels, a subtitle, and a description. Then I'll click Next. Here is where I can decide what tables will be included in the report. Remember when I expanded the section earlier to show the interfaces on the switch? That is one of the tables. If I enable the Interfaces table on this screen, for each device in the report that has multiple interfaces, the table of interfaces will be included. I'll click Next to select Templates. In order to generate a report, there must be at least one template defined. Here, I see all the templates I've created. By default, they'll all be selected. I'll deselect the ones I don't want to use. Now, I'll click Generate to generate the report. It'll be available in the Uploaded Files section of Link Live. The last part of discovery that we'll look at is the discovery difference. This tool allows me to identify the differences between two discovery files. I'll begin by selecting one of the discovery files I'd like to compare. Next, I'll click on Discovery Difference. Now I need to select at least one other discovery file of the same network. After I select the discovery file, I'll click on Create Discovery Difference. I provide a descriptive name for the new discovery difference file and then click Generate. A new discovery difference file appears at the top of the list of discoveries. I'll select the discovery difference I just created. Here we can see the information about the discovery files that were used to create the discovery difference file. The baseline is the initial discovery file. The other is the discovery file against which the baseline is being compared. At the bottom, we can see the number of missing and new devices. Now I'll click on Topology. As we look at the topology map, we see some of the devices are orange and some are red. The orange devices are devices that are missing between the two discoveries and the red devices are the new devices between the two discoveries. The Discovery Difference tool is useful in determining what has changed on the network over time or identifying unauthorized devices. If I click on the filter icon, we can see a new filter category is available. If I expand this category, I see I can filter on missing devices and new devices, or devices that are the same between the discovery files. Of course, a template can be created based on this filter, making it easy to generate a report showing the differences between the two discovery files. In summary, 
The network discovery feature of the Etherscope NXG is a quick and easy way to document your network. The filters may be used to narrow the display devices down to your specific needs. Both reports and diagrams can be generated based on the discovery information. Discovery information is viewable by any member of your Link Live organization without the need for special software. Be sure to check out our other videos on getting the most out of Link Live.